a table and a feast are shown to us in heaven in the last book of the Bible. Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. The angel told me, Revelation 19 verse 9, in terms of heaven, what does that guarantee? A feast, on the other hand, guarantees that we will never be hungry or thirsty. Additionally, it assures reunification and unity. A lot of people's households revolve around the dinner table. People congregate there. We shall also be reunited at the table of heaven. Distancing factors such as distance, busyness, language, pride, and death are no longer an issue. When we gather at God's table, we shall finally raise a glass to our triumph over death, sin, and everything that stands between us and God and one another. Envision a dinner that surpasses all expectations, a meal that God Himself has prepared, a place where sorrow is replaced with unending pleasure and gratitude. Those who trust in Jesus Christ will attend the heavenly feast, the pinnacle of celebrations. This beautiful event is hinted at throughout Scripture, a promise that has encouraged and nourished Christians for generations, a potent emblem of God's love, grace, and the everlasting life He provides to those who believe. The heavenly feast appears in many biblical texts, beginning with Isaiah's prophesies and continuing through Jesus' parables and, eventually, the revelations delivered to John. We should go into this tremendous potential. The scriptural basis of the heavenly feast will be explored as we think about the tables in paradise. We pray that this joyous occasion brings us closer to our Savior and that our faith is strengthened as we eagerly await His return. From prophesies in the Old Testament to promises in the New Testament, the concept of the heavenly feast is interwoven throughout the Bible. Let us go into a few crucial verses that illuminate the wonder and importance of this wonderful feast. Isaiah 25 verses 6 to 8 has a profound prophesy on the heavenly feast. All nations will gather here for a banquet of old wine and the greatest meats and wines, prepared by the Lord Almighty. There, on this peak, He will rend the veil that conceals the earth and its inhabitants. Forever He will suffocate death. When His people's shame is lifted from every corner of the globe, the Sovereign Lord will dry their eyes. The heavenly feast is mentioned by Jesus Himself in Matthew 8 verse 11 of the New Testament. The Lord says, I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. The promise of everlasting association with the saints of old and the Savior Himself is laid forth in this text, which means that the heavenly feast is more than merely an event in the future. Revelation 19 verses 6 to 9 provides one of the clearest depictions of the heavenly feast. It seemed like a huge multitude was yelling, Hallelujah! After which I perceived a rumble similar to the sound of running water and a clap of thunder, because the Almighty Lord God rules supreme. Let us be joyful and rejoice so that He may get the praise. The time has arrived for the wedding of the Lamb, and His bride has prepared herself. Her garments were made of bright, clean, fine linen. Following this, the angel instructed me to write, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. This paragraph has a wealth of deep meaning. Jesus Christ is like the bridegroom at the bridal feast, and the church is like the bride. The everlasting bond between God and His people is shown in this lovely painting. The clean clothes the bride wears represent the righteousness of the saints of God which is made possible by the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We can see from these verses that the heavenly feast is a joyous celebration of the oneness of the body of Christ and a promise of everlasting life. Those who have put their faith in Jesus Christ will be together at this heavenly feast, where they will praise the Lamb and partake in the eternal benefits of His atoning love. We pray that these scriptural realities will heighten our desire for the day when we shall sit down at the Lord's table and revel in His infinite delight and glory for all eternity. The consummation of God's purpose for redemption is powerfully symbolized by the heavenly feast. It is a symbol of the fullness of God's reconciling relationship with His people and the consummation of Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross. This future reality and the hope we have in Christ are recalled as we share in the Lord's Supper here on earth. An important part of the teachings surrounding the second coming of Christ is the idea of the heavenly feast. 
similarly to how the wedding feast in the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25 verses 1 to 13, represents the bridegroom's homecoming, the marriage supper of the Lamb will be the pinnacle celebration when Christ returns. At this moment, the era comes to a close and the new age begins with our Savior. The promise of the heavenly feast gives us hope and encouragement every day, even when we're going through tough times. We can overcome the difficulties of this life if we keep our focus on the everlasting pleasure that is waiting for us. A day will come when everything will be well, and our current hardships are just transient, as the heavenly feast reminds us. Additionally, the heavenly feast emphasizes God's immense mercy and compassion. Having been welcomed to supper at the royal table via Christ, it is a cause for rejoicing. Jesus' atoning sacrifice on the cross is the only ground for this call, not our own goodness or deeds. God has gone to tremendous measures to bring us back into fellowship with Him, and the heavenly feast is evidence of this. At its core, the heavenly feast is a metaphor for the everlasting delight and contentment that come from being in God's presence. This world, with all its joys and sorrows, is not our eternal dwelling place. This is something to keep in mind. According to C.S. Lewis, if I find in myself desires which nothing in this world can satisfy, the only logical explanation is that I was made for another world. There is another world, and the heavenly feast gives us a taste of it. There, we shall discover our Creator and live out our lives to the fullest. The tremendous promise of the heavenly feast is something for which we should be eternally grateful. May us draw strength, encouragement, and solace from the truth that we are seated at the King's table through Christ, and that we shall one day revel in His omnipresence and the everlasting delight of His kingdom. As we look forward to the final celebration of the heavenly feast, we are fortunate to enjoy a taste of this heavenly feast via the Lord's Supper, also known as the Eucharist. Sharing this holy meal together as a church family brings us closer to Christ, strengthens our bond with one another, and emphasizes the everlasting hope we have in Him. Coming to the Lord's table is more than just going through the motions. It is a joyous celebration of God's kindness and love. Until He comes again, we announce His death while we break bread and drink cup. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 26. We proclaim our common faith and the relationship we have in Christ by joining with Christians throughout history and throughout the globe in this act. A moment of profound thankfulness and contemplation is the Lord's Supper celebration. Thanks be to God for the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ, who humbled himself by laying down his life for our sins. As members of his body, the Church, we also want to thank him for the camaraderie that we experience. We receive a taste of the glorious communion that will be ours at the heavenly feast when we unite in love and oneness. Let us be reminded of the significance of actively engaging in our church communities as we share the Lord's Supper in our earthly meetings. These fellowships allow us to support one another, share our struggles, and encourage each other to love and do good things. According to Hebrews 10 verses 24 to 25, we should not be afraid to welcome others to share in our joy and to hear the gospel of God's kindness and love as well as the hope that we have in Christ, which will last forever. The Lord's Supper is a memorial of the everlasting banquet that will be held after this life's festivities of breaking bread and drinking wine. Let us be grateful, have faith and hope restored, and may we keep inviting others so that they, too, may see the Lord's goodness, Psalm 34 verse 8 and share in the ultimate celebration with us, the heavenly feast in His presence. As we have delved more into the celestial banquet, we have seen how profound and full this biblical prophecy is. We have seen how this magnificent feast symbolizes the completion of God's plan for redemption and the everlasting pleasure that awaits those who trust in Christ from Isaiah's prophesies through Jesus' parables and the revelations delivered to John. According to what we've heard, the heavenly feast is a memorial service honoring the oneness of the Church, when Christians from all walks of life will come together in harmony to adore the Lamb. We have seen how this promise gives us strength to persevere through difficult times, as it assures us that the problems we are facing now are just temporary, and that there will be a day when everything will be okay. I beg you to do so now if you haven't already accepted the invitation to the celestial banquet. Jesus Christ has set aside a seat at His banquet and is waiting to welcome you into His everlasting reign.
If you have already said yes, I pray that you will strengthen your confidence in God's promise. Hold on to the hope of the heavenly feast and allow it to calm your spirit as the waves of this world crash around you. At the end of this film, may us be reminded that the heavenly feast is not some faraway dream, but rather a reality that may impact our present actions. We pray that the hope of the heavenly banquet fills our lives with love, joy, and purpose as we look forward to the last celebration in paradise. He who promised will not let us waver from the hope we have professed. Hebrews 10 verse 23. May we remain steadfast in our hope, trusting in the faithfulness of the one who has promised. And may we extend an invitation to others to come along with us on this path so that they, too, might know God's love and grace and share in the everlasting delight of the heavenly banquet. Oral Accompaniment Well done! A scene from heaven, complete with a table and a feast, is shown in the last book of the Bible. And the angel spoke to me, saying, Write this. Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19 verse 9. In terms of heaven, what does that guarantee? A feast, on the other hand, guarantees that we will never be hungry or thirsty. Additionally, it assures reunification and unity. A lot of people's households revolve around the dinner table. People congregate there. We shall also be reunited at the table of heaven. Distancing factors such as time, space, language, pride, and mortality are now non existent. When we gather at God's table, we shall finally raise a glass to our triumph over death, sin, and everything that stands between us and God and one another. Envision a dinner that surpasses all expectations, a meal that God Himself has prepared, a place where sorrow is replaced with unending pleasure and gratitude. For those who trust in Jesus Christ, this is the banquet in paradise, the pinnacle of joy. This beautiful event is hinted at throughout Scripture a promise that has encouraged and nourished Christians for generations. Throughout the Bible, from Isaiah's prophesies to Jesus' parables and, eventually, the revelations to John, the heavenly feast has served as a potent emblem of God's love, grace, and the promise of everlasting life to those who believe. We should go into this tremendous potential. The scriptural basis of the heavenly feast will be explored as we think about the tables in paradise. We pray that this joyous occasion brings us closer to our Savior and that our faith is strengthened as we eagerly await His return. From prophesies in the Old Testament to promises in the New Testament, the heavenly feast is a thread that runs through the fabric of Scripture. Let us go into a few crucial verses that illuminate the wonder and importance of this wonderful feast. A strong prophesy of the celestial banquet is found in the book of Isaiah. On this mountain the Lord Almighty will prepare a banquet of aged wine, the best, and a feast of rich food for all peoples, says chapter 25, 6-8. Of course, this is the version with the punctuation. Let us also think about how to encourage one another to love and good deeds, not slacking off when we gather as some do but rather meeting together frequently and becoming more enthusiastic as the day of judgment draws near. Hebrews 10 verses 24-25. I pray that when we assemble as a community, we are able to strengthen each other in love and good acts, and that we are able to lean on one another when times go tough. As we follow Christ, let us not neglect the importance of fellowship with other Christians but rather welcome it with open arms. The value of fellowship and the assembly of Christians is emphasized throughout the Bible. According to Acts 2 verses 42 to 47, the early church members were very committed to one another and their fellowship spending their time together in prayer, sharing meals, and listening to the teachings of the apostles. As they continued their daily routine of worshiping at the temple and sharing meals at home, they praised God and enjoyed the favor of all the people. The strong feeling of belonging and solidarity felt by the early Christians is emphasized in this chapter. Not only did they promise to meet often for worship, but they also promised to meet often to encourage one another, share stories about their lives, and provide mutual support. They realized the significance of fellowship for their spiritual development and the importance of maintaining it. Also, the Bible stresses how strong a group of Christians can be when they band together. According to Matthew 18 verse 20, Jesus declares, For wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. 
When we get together in Jesus' name, He is present, as the Scripture tells us. Through our shared faith in Christ, we are strengthened and surrounded by His power, which allows us to feel His love, wisdom, and provision. Furthermore, Paul often urged Christians to gather and support one another. A passage from 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11 states, Therefore encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. We may carry out this call to fellowship by supporting and encouraging one another in our words, deeds, and prayers when we come together as a community. Worshiping God as a community is fundamental to our faith, and gathering as Christians allows us to do just that. As a united church, we may worship God in His holy presence by bringing our praise, gratitude, and devotion to Him. Worship is a way for us to show God how much we respect Him, strengthen our bond with Him, and become closer to His divine nature. In conclusion, the Bible stresses the value of assembly for Christians. We experience spiritual development, accountability, support, and encouragement within the setting of a community. In unity, we are to glorify God, encourage one another to love and good deeds, and carry each other's burdens. We may be a benefit and an encouragement to others and experience the fullness of what God desires for His people as we emphasize friendship and actively engage in the life of the Church.